Hello everyone, in this and the next two lectures we will be covering an interesting and complex topic which is triangulation in mammography, that is to say how to locate a suspicious finding on the images so that we can carry out any in-depth studies to characterize it. The first is an introductory lesson on anatomy in which we will begin to answer two important questions how and where a lesion appears on mammography images. The area to be documented in mammography is large. We know that a high-quality mammogram must include the maximum extension of tissue that is possible. Distension or stretching is also important, and by distension we do do not mean just the elimination of faults, right? And in addition is important the acquisition geometry, which allows the documentation of the breast in a way that is faithful to the original, that is, without deformation. All this increases the possibility of detecting a lesion by those who read the images, improving what is called cospicuity. We mammographers must only not only position and compress correctly, but also know how to evaluate exactly the quality of the image we have produced. So, the starting point of these lectures must be anatomy and radiographic anatomy. I will therefore give you a quick summary of the inner anatomy of the breast. This is a surgical type drawing with the corresponding mammography from front to back, skin, the subcutaneous fat or hypodermis, and the glandular body. Containing posteriorly behind the glandular body is the mammary space, where most of the bread fat is located, and then the pectoralis muscle. There are many ligaments, the best known being the Cooper's ligaments. The main ones have an interior posterior course from the hypodermis to the pectoralis muscle. Usually the anterior portions called jury crests, are more visible. We must include the pectoralis major muscle and, if possible, also the latissimus dorsi in the mellow projection, of both of which I spoke diffusely in a recent serial lectures. You can find them on this channel. So, I'll move on. Another fundamental anatomical portion is the axilla. This is a complex anatomical area. In mammography, only two walls are visible, as you know, the uh, anterior and the posterior. Of the anterior, only the pectoralis muscle is visible, and of the posterior one, only the latissimus dorsi, and not always. Let us turn just as quickly to the histological anatomy. As you know, the breast is made up of fat and glandular tissue, which is in turn made up of two parts, the glandular functional part and the supporting fibrous part. Let us consider uh, the fibrous part. It is made up of the progressive subdivision of the cupus ligaments. These are, uh, that I have already shown you, are only the main ones. There are many others perpendicular to these, which wrap around the gland externally and also subdivide it internally, forming a very dense three-dimensional multi-directional network that is only really comprehensible when you look at a rear coronal breast section, like this one. We know the division of the gland into lobes, lobulus, and acini or alveoli. But it is fact is often uh, overlooked, the gland is active 
only during pregnancy and lactation. For the rest of the time, from menarche to menopause, it is at rest. The glandular part is then composed only of the ductal tree or network. And it is the thermal part of the ductal tree that evolves and forms the sinai when the gland is active. The histological unit of the mammary gland is called TGLU, terminal duct lower unit, and it would appear that from the cells that line the walls of the ducts, almost all breast tumors evolve. And it is the crossing of the basement membrane, which form the boundary between the ducts and everything else, that indicates the transition from in situ to infiltrating tumor. The mammographic findings that the doctor looks for on the images are therefore an indication of a shift in a way, more or less, from the normal anatomy, which I have very quickly shown you. There are often benign changes, most of the time, appearing, for example, as density, even very large, but well circumscribed, as distortion of the glandular profile, as density not generally present in normal anatomy, may present as secretion, calcifications, as ectopic gland, swelling, or with a mass effect such as to induce, as in this case, a retraction of the nipple. As for malignant lesions, they can be seen with the infiltration of the pectoralis muscle and skin, as nipple retraction, uh, as involvement of the cupa ligaments, which may be infiltrated by malignant cells, as dense uh, lesion with a perimeter difficult to identify, micro, micro calcifications, dense lesion or uh, even not very dense lesions, but presented speculations indicating that the lesion has gone beyond the basement membrane, involving the surrounding tissue and to modify it. They are called desmoplastic effects, but these are all cases in which the lesion had been present for a long time, even a very long time. The purpose of the screening program is to detect very small lesions before they evolve and the prognosis worsens. In this last case, with such a finding, whether we want to study more closely, can we really answer the question where? Are we sure it is in the central quadrant? To get all the spatial information, we know we have to acquire both projections, but this is not enough. The gland has to be documented, we said, as faithfully as possible, not only in terms of the extension and distension of the tissue, but also in terms of acquisition geometry. There is a connection between how the breast is reproduced on the image and how and where a lesion appears. What do I mean by that? How and where a lesion appears on the mammography images depends on several factors beyond the nature of the lesion itself. On the projection, of course, but most of all on the work of the mammographer for compression, distension, positioning, satisfaction, and acquisition geometry parameters. Our responsibility in producing high-quality images is really, really important. Meeting the two parameters of acquisition geometry means documenting the breast as it is in reality, without deformation due to rotation distortion, and thus answering the question, where exactly? The first parameter says, the superior part and the uh, inferior part have to be in parallel to each other and to the detector. For CC, 
for MLO, medial and lateral parts have two in parallel. That is to say, the nipple is in profile. Second parameter. The thoracic wall must be in perpendicular to the median axial plane and to the sagittal one. The mammogram they have called ogival because of this tip is produced with a major rotation directed medially. The second acquisition parameter is not satisfied if it were that finding that you see circumscribed in white would be about here. You understand that the answer to the question where in this case it would have not been the right one. Image 1. Again, second parameter not satisfied, media rotation. The first parameter is also not satisfied, you see the nipple is not in profile. This finding appears, but it is real. Repetition in image 2, more correct. The same finding seems less worrying. So, the correct position is not only answer to the question where, but also to the question how. Let's consider now image, images 3 and 4. In 3, again, rotation, this time directed laterally. Is this finding real? Repetition in image 4, more correct. The finding seems to have disappeared. It was a false positive. Again, a rotation or even a slight directed Majorly, you see the ogiva tip. This finding appears a speculated one. Repetition in image 2 with a more correct acquisition geometry. And the finding has disappeared. Worrying finding in image 1. There are also speculars, it seems. Very different in image 2. And it is the same projection. In, and this micro in image 3. What is the real location? Outer or center quadrant, as it appears to be in image 4? Before talking about the location of a lesion, it is essential to be sure, as far as possible, that the images acquired are as close as, pos as possible to reality, which is not trivial, let's be clear. The breast is a very difficult organ to reproduce in a standardized way. We have been talking about it a lot in other lessons. But this is the task of the breast radiographer, who not only has to produce optimal images, but also to understand whether the diagnostic information is correct. For example, the position of the pictorialis major in image 3 must make it clear that the breast has not been well reproduced. Part of the outer quadrant is missing, documented more efficaciously in image 4. The true position of the micro was in the central quadrant in effect. Well, I hope I've given you a lot of food for thought and that you will enjoy watching the next two videos in this series. I will then conclude the first lesson here. In the second one, we will talk about localization systems in mammography. I thank you and see you all.